saw the need, we had an opportunity, someone said, here, here's some fresh produce. And we just decided to just give it out. Give it out in a spirit of love and community, and that's all it took. With about 20 million Americans out of work because of the pandemic, folks are struggling to put food on the table. People in both cities and rural areas are lining up in massive numbers at food banks and donation centers. In New York, a group of community organizers decided to take matters into their own hands by bringing fresh produce to their neighborhood for free. I wanted to learn more about getting fresh, sustainable food to those who need it right now. So I reached out to entrepreneur and sustainability expert, Diana Rose. She and a group of volunteers have fed thousands of people in Southeast Queens. She was also able to share some great tips on how individuals can make an impact in their communities. I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. Since the beginning of May, Diana Rose, Aaliyah Abraham, and volunteers with the community organization Black Resource Network have hosted weekly Share Health Pantry pop-ups to bring fresh food to the neighborhood of Southeast Queens. Using Facebook and Instagram to organize and promote and accepting donations from local businesses, the weekly Share Health Pantry events have already fed 2,000 people. You know, with everything going on with COVID-19 and of course the disparities that we see in communities of color, we just said, you know what? It's imperative that we provide this resource to, you know, our community. And they started to come out in droves. So you come, you get some healthy food, you build healthy relationships with organizations in the community, with your, you know, neighbors that you probably wouldn't have met before. You know, you just really have to be there to experience that everyone leaves not full with a basket of produce, but they just leave full all over. It's just, it's just so great. Describe for me how you're getting this food and then and getting it out to the community. So, you know, we partner with other organizations in the community and they'll call and they'll, because a lot of the times they see the work that we're doing through social media, through Facebook and Instagram, and they'll say, hey, we have 500 pineapples. Can you come pick them up? Or we have X amount of boxes of fresh produce. Can you come pick them up? And we're like, absolutely. Not only that, a $3,000 donation from the organization Queens Together allowed Black Resource Network to buy food from local restaurants and grocery stores. We just get people loving on us and just wanting to really help us further the mission. So that is how we're able to fund the pop-up pantry. And why is healthy food being more accessible so important? Disproportionately, you know, even like I said, looking at the numbers for COVID, the deaths, we know that in BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, people of color communities that, you know, COVID has ravaged our communities much more disproportionately than any other um, community. Especially at this moment, being able to have access to healthy, fresh produce is integral to the optimal health. And we know that, again, there's a large number of disparities regarding um, chronic and communicable diseases in communities of color. So if we can really hone in the idea like, you know, it's got, listen, everyone, it's important that we take our health in our hands. It's important that we demand food justice in our communities because if you do have an underlying effect, COVID or, or any other disease or illness will affect us the most. So at any other time in history, we need to understand that Healthy food, it's, it's not a privilege, it's not a luxury. It's something that we need to have in our community. Across the U.S., low-income communities of color disproportionately have less access to fresh food. Communities with limited access to affordable and nutritious foods are called food deserts, and the folks that live there can have poorer health and higher rates of obesity. Research has shown that black populations in the U.S have half as much access to chain supermarkets as white people. You were showing me images of like sometimes the produce that you're seeing in your community is just not up to par of what it should be and what people deserve. I started this campaign called um, SEQ Fresh and it's really an opportunity to shine a light on the food injustices in our communities communities of color again it's really simple you go into your supermarket you go into your produce market and you see something that you know in your heart should not be there or the produce is not fresh take a picture and hashtag seq fresh so that way we can collect data through pictures to show like this is not something that we're just griping about this is really happening you post it you tag us and that way we can present it to our elected officials we can present it to other organizations and say we demand food justice in our communities. How can other people emulate the system that you guys have created in trying to bring this type of thing to their community? The first thing is don't think so hard. Don't think so hard. Whenever you get that inkling in your chest that says you can help, 
just figure out what's the best way that you can help, right? It might not be that you can go out there physically and give out food at a pantry. It could just be that you can, you know, donate financially or share a post. With the Share Health pop-up pantry, it, we didn't have a huge meeting. It wasn't a conference meeting. It didn't take a week to map out a plan how we're gonna do this. We said, you know what? We saw the need, we had an opportunity. You know, someone said, here, here's some fresh produce. And we just decided to just give it out give it out in a spirit of love and community and that's all it took if you have access to healthy fresh produce pick a spot you know speak to your elected officials speak to parks department whoever you have in your community and say hey we'd like to do a pop-up the pop-up pantry is only two hours and we do that because you know we want to you know ensure a great experience and not to have burnout but it doesn't have to be a long day it could just be a few hours and having people come out and saying here you know this is what we're offering considering everything obviously that's happening we're having protests around the world around justice for george floyd and i personally am like reflecting and being like i can be a better ally and a better amplifier of black and brown voices and i want to know what you think about just intersectionality and the environmental movement and like what we need to like take away from this moment oh this is such a heavy one it's so much going on right now we didn't even get to walk out of covid before we walked into another heavy important and devastating topic and time and you know it really is said that you can't talk environmental justice without understanding and working through social injustice. And I feel like as, you know, as a woman of color, as a black woman, especially in the environmental space, it has been very, very difficult for me in the beginning, especially in the beginning to, you know, present my ideas, get invited to certain circles or certain tables or certain talks and panels. Um, and even though I've been doing this since, I, you know, I have my degree in community health and my background is in sustainability for over 10 years. So it's been, you know, it's been an uphill battle. So to see the ability to make forward progress through the unfortunate events, through George Floyd and our Breonna Taylors, to be able to have that open dialogue and conversation with other communities, with other people to say, um, what can we do to help has been awesome. I feel like a lot of the, you know, black indigenous people of color in the environmental space has really had an opportunity to have their their platforms elevated and mm -hmm. you know it's 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 beautiful but it's sad at the same time because there are so many people that were doing so much great work and they just didn't have the opportunity to have their platforms you know like i said elevated so i feel like if anything through this there will be a definite bridging and a definite open honest dialogue to say um you know what can we do to help? What's one small step that people can take? There's so many little steps that we can all take, but I would say one small step is just, and especially in this time and season, is to care. And I know when you think of sustainability, you think of maybe like cycling and reducing, yes. But um, if you just care, it really all starts with caring. So caring about your community is the first small step that you can do to build sustainable communities. It was so inspiring to connect with Diana and see how one person and one organization can have an impact on thousands of people's lives. And it's a great reminder that all of us have the power to change our communities for the better. You can donate to the Black Resource Network and support their work in Southeast Queens by finding them on Facebook and Instagram. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.